Dinosaurs really fulfill this, this tremendous role in, in scientific consciousness in, in the public realm. And Tyrannosaurus rex uh, is probably the world's best known dinosaur. It really captures the imagination. It's obviously a gigantic animal. It's 40 feet long. It's uh, 10 tons in, in weight or so. It has a head that's five feet long, full of 58 large teeth. So it's sort of been in our public consciousness as this apex predator for well over a century. Sue is actually, believe it or not, the first tyrannosaur specimen we have with a, a complete forelimb. So it confirms the T-Rex, like other tyrannosaurs, has a very small limb relative to its body size. And there's always been this question of what would an animal so large be doing with a forelimb so small? So today we are looking for any kind of information that can help us to identify what Sue was using her arms for, because it's one of the big mysteries around Tyrannosaurus. Interestingly enough, when the first specimen was found in, in the early 1900s, they drew a reconstruction with the short arm, but then said, this is probably wrong. They just didn't want to believe that an animal that big had such a short forelimb. Since then, people have come up with a variety of ideas of what it might have done. So what we're trying to do is actually take all that one step back and ask a much more fundamental question is, were these arms really being used at all? I belong to the camp of, of scientists who thinks that uh, the arms of tyrannosaurs probably became reduced through lack of use. They just basically became less and less important to the biology of the animal. So if we think of things like emus and ostriches, they actually reduce their forelimb to differing degrees. And based on those comparisons, it's, it's very tempting to say that T-Rex and other large predatory dinosaurs with small forelimbs were kind of following the same trajectory. So to test that, we were actually going to compare some of the bone signal we get here with that in some of these flightless birds. Typically, I have studied small, medium-sized uh, fossils, so including insects in number, arthropods, all types of animals and plants in number. So this is the first time that we are attending something as big as a dinosaur. So we take our samples, we would illuminate it with, uh, with X-rays, so we will put X-rays going through, the, through it, and then we will record with a camera what the, the X-rays are doing after hitting the sample. So this technique is uh, similar as uh, we apply to material science, to energy science uh, samples, but we used what is called propagation phase contrast, that it sounds very complicated, but it, what it does, it see Rather than the, the difference in density in a sample, it looks at the differences in the volume, meaning in the shape of the sample, not only outside but also inside. It will give you a 3D image of the cellular structure of the bone. That's something that a conventional machine cannot do, and it's something that you need these kind of uh, very, very powerful X-ray generators to do. What the X-ray imaging is going to help us do is actually look at almost cellular level structures of how the bone grew. In bones of animals today, we see that bones that are subjected to a lot of exercise, there's a lot of microfracturing. So it's sort of an indirect evidence that the bone is, is being used a lot. So we're going to try and look at the degree of bone remodeling in Sioux compared to some other dinosaurs, some living animals, and try and understand the question whether these arms were being used a lot as you know, fossils are non-replicable. So being non-destructive, these techniques for us are amazing because no one is going to allow you to cut a specimen like Sue, for example, that it's so unique. So having a, a way of studying the inner part, the inner structure of these bones without having to cut them down, it's something that has no price. When I got into this field 20 some years ago, we would never have imagined what we're gonna be doing today. And who knows what the next generation will be doing, but I think the kids who are gonna sort of get inspired by watching this will then, some of them will move on and, and take this the next step.